on the underside, do your three, and then stretch over to the gap. That's how you would do that. But we're not going to do that on this uh, particular project. What I want you to do is that I need you to slip stitch to the center of this piece over here. So we're just going to go in, pull through, and through. That's a slip stitch. And then we're going to go into the next one, pull through, and through. And now we're going to chain one. And we're going to put in our three single crochets into that same hole now. Whoops, that's a double. <laughs> so one, two, and three. And this will cause it to stack on top of each other. So immediately when you look at it, you want to stretch over to the middle one of the next piece. Okay? So just right to the middle. That's the end. This is the middle. That's the, the end of the other side. So right into the middle. And we want to put in three single crochets in that spot. Okay, and then we just want to stretch over and again look for the next one which is in the middle and three single crochets. And what I need you to do now is that we're going to just, I'm going to take you back to the starting of this again. We're going to meet back up and then I'm going to show you again just one more time. And then we're looking for about a two inch uh, distance on this particular band and uh, it actually looks really quite uh, sharp. Uh, when you're doing it. So let me uh, get you back to the beginning again. Just keep on going. I'll meet you back up. We'll, we'll do it one more time and then you're off on your own to finish the band. Okay. I've now just come all the way around again and I just want to slip stitch. So I'm over top of this one. The next one there is where we started. So we just want to slip stitch to the very beginning where we chained one in the very start of this row. Okay, I'm just going to stick it in, pull it through and through. And now, just like before, we need to move over so that we're on the middle piece here. So we're just going to slip stitch once and twice. Okay, and slip stitch it, chain one, and right again, right underneath is where we're going to be doing our three single crochets again. Okay, and then we're going to stretch. Just again, look for the middle of the next one. And you can see that they're just stacking on top of each other beautifully here. And just continue to do that and slip stitch and continue to do that until this band becomes around 2 inches. If you want it more, you can continue to do more. If you want it less, then stop earlier. But you're the artist. You can decide what you want for yourself. So continue that. We'll meet back up and we'll continue along with this project. Now I'm just finishing up here and I have my two inch banner as you can see and we are just finalizing and we are going to be finishing with this particular bag at the top end of it and again we're just using our three single crochets together in one stitch. Okay and then what we want to do and then slip stitch to where you started. And we are now complete so we're going to finalize this off and we're going to make it real look real sharp. Get your fancy dancy scissors out. My Westcott scissors. Just cutting my string there. And I'm going to just pull up like that. And I'm going to just tie it shut. So I'm just going to slip in my hook into the stitch behind, grab the material, pull through. And then I grab the, the next material again and pull it through. And this will tie it onto itself. And then I'm just going to go to the very next stitch. Just pull it through. Just the next one again. Pulling it through. And then I'm going to just fasten it again one more time. And then pull through the next one. And the next one that will be considered done and I'm just going to trim this nice and short we can finalize that later so therefore you would have your finished piece just like so so now it's time to make the handle for this and you can tell that we have not even fastened off yet almost looks like a mini skirt at this particular point and uh, let's do the handle next and keep on moving Here we have the handle and the handles are 18 inches long and before we're putting it onto the project and you'll notice that the handles have a twist added to it and the twist is happening because of the way that we're crocheting so I haven't had to twist it in order to make it look like this and I've left very generous pieces on the end so that I could tie this into the project in order to facet it in so that we have some handles. Now 
this is actually, you'll see two strings. This is because we're using two strings at one time. So instead of buying two different yarn balls, because you don't need a lot of this deep straw color, I just use the yarn that's wrapping around the outside, as well as I'm using the yarn from the inside to double up as I go. So we're going to start off with about a two foot di distance, and we're going to create a slip knot. And go from there. So according to the directions, they want us to chain four. So this never counts as one. So one, two, three, and four. And by the way, I'm using a six and a half millimeter crochet hook for this if you're interested. It's the highest size that I've used for this. I find it's a little bit easier. Now they're asking us to go from the second from the hook, we want to go in and draw the material up. So we're just going to go in, wrap the material, and pull up. And I'm going to pull a little slack on that. So now we're going to go to the very next one. We're just going to go in, wrap, and pull up. Okay? And then finally we're going to do it again for the last one. So in, wrap, and pull up. So now you have four groups here. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. If this was individual strings, there would only be four loops. So unusually, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to push the hook all the way through this way because the less handling I can do on this piece, the easiest it is. When I rotate now, I want to rotate it towards you. So I want you to rotate it clockwise. And just gently because you don't want these loops to fall out and once you're getting used to this product or project you're going to notice that it's actually very simple to do. I want you to slip in the hook now to the new one that's on this side and I want you to bypass the first two groups and go all the way to the end. Always starting on this is a little bit of a trick but once you get it started, you'll see how easy it is. So now I want you to wrap the material and pull it just through this one only. And now, we're, instead of normally working from this way, we're going to actually work backwards toward us. So we're going to come on this one here. I'm going to go in and pull the material through that one only. And then finally, we have the last one here. And we're now just going to just manipulate it, put it on and give it some slack. So the slack is where your trick is right here. So again, in order to less handling, okay, I want you to push the hook all the way through. See how they're all still in order? You, and I want you to turn this clockwise, slipping in your hook to the very first one, bypass the middle two groups, go to the end, wrap and through, go to the next one that is on the left hand side, wrap and through, and then finally get the last one. That's all this is. So just wrap and through. So you end up with four groups back on your hook. Okay, so remember the secret. Just push through, okay, rotate this clockwise, going into the first one there, bypassing the two middle groups going to the end, wrap and through, and then we're going on to the left hand side one, okay, and then finally get the last one. And this is causing the material to rotate onto itself. And what's happened here is that I have left a straggling piece, and I'm going to leave this. This should be actually classified as an outtake, but I want to leave it in because you don't want to do something like that. Okay, you want to make sure you get all the plies and not just the one. So I've got them all now, and let's do it properly. So you can see that the twist is actually already starting to happen. So again, forward, rotate clockwise, going into the end bypassing to the other end, wrap and through, now going to the one on the left, wrap and through, and then finally the very last one that's right in front, wrap and through. Okay, one last time, so push through, I'm going to speed up, end to end, wrap and, wrap and through, to the left, wrap and through, and to the one right left that's on the, the only one that's left, wrapping through. 
And I want you to continue to do that until you get to 18 inches long. And what I would do is probably just measure it to the other one that you just did, just in case you were slightly off so that they're both the same size. So keep on going and we'll, I'll just meet you back up when this is uh, at the 18 inch mark and I'll show you what to do next. Well, in just a matter of minutes, my whole 18 inches is done and I actually aligned it with my other one here so that I know that it's right. And I want to trim this string that's coming from it about, again, about two feet long. Don't be cheap. Leave yourself some extra space because we're going to use that to sew it to the purse. I want to now take this string and just pull it through all of the loops like that. And then I just want to grab onto it one more time and pull it through and pull everything through. And that just tied a knot onto itself. So now we're ready uh, to move on to our next step. So then we're going to put this aside for now. Now we're going to begin to do the motif that's attached. You can't deny that it's absolutely gorgeous on it. It totally makes this bag incredible. And I did a test sample here with the Bernat Super Value yarn as well. We're going to be doing okay, the let's start off with the slip knot going around or using your Super Value coloring. We're using a five and a half uh, millimeter crochet hook. So we're gone back to the original size that I did the gray or the clay part. And we're gone back with that. If you go with the smaller one, the flower doesn't come out as large and it's probably not as desirable. So let's uh, begin with our slip knot, and it says to chain two. So this never counts as one. So one and two. And now it's saying to six single crochets, the second from the hook, which is the original one that we started with, and we're going to do six single crochets around the center. So we got one. We got two. Two. three, four, five, and six. And now it's saying to join with the beginning one that we started with, which we're just gonna do. We're just gonna slip stitch it to the beginning. And we need to do a really quick lesson on front and back loops, which I'll do right now. When you look at a stitch, you always see two strings. You see the one that's closest to you. So if you're looking at this one right here, you see the one that's closest to you. That is your front loop, and the one in behind is your back loop. And this flower uses both of these loops individually as you work your way around. So let's move on to your next level. And so we're now in round two and we're just going to chain up one. It says work on the front loops only one, one single crochet in the first single crochet, one half double crochet, two double crochet, and one half double crochet in the next, and then move back to one single crochet. So let's simplify that for you. Looking down, you'll see two loops, and it's harder to see at first, but it'll totally make sense to you. So there's actually two. So you do one and two. And we just want the very front one. We don't want both. Because we're on the next round from here, we're going to be using the one that's in the back. And so this is a little like operation just to get that front loop, just to get it started. Isn't it? 